linear conservation of light and conservation of analyzing various matrices uh, using the total light of carbon analyzing. Uh, Dr. Tang is residing in Houston, Texas, in the RSP and chemistry from the University of Houston, and has more than 20 years experience in product development, quality control, project management, and training, and education, and specialty guests. He has publications in scientific journals and many uh, uh, presentations conferences at the future conference. Um,
operational principle result still be the same. Okay, so this is a complete uh, zero. The, uh, the KC analyzer uses a nitrogen zero gas, okay, zero. And uh, we put the 9.5 uh, ppm uh, message in nitrogen matrix. We got 9.4 uh, volt. <coughs> then we'll put the 4 ppm in, 4 ppm message in nitrogen because it's not the one. So you know, it makes sense. Now, when we put the 9.5 ppm uh, methane balance in helium, now we can see the uh, voltage drop to 6.15, 1.6 volt. It's significant, lower. Same thing, like we would put 9.5 uh, ppm methane in argon, we get 7.7 .7 volts. So, just from this uh, table, it's very difficult to predict if your matrix is different. If I do instruments calculate with the nitrogen based standard, now today you want to analyze you know, the hydrocarbon content in different metrics, it's very difficult unless you have some kind of correlation that you. So this is a challenge today, the lab, lab formation, especially in our industrial, uh, industrial gas or special gas industry. Okay. Now it's not uncommon that we have a, a sample in multiple matrices in a day, okay? For example, in this case, uh, for example, the second one is the nitrogen matrix, the Se uh, second one is the helium matrix, third one is the argon matrix, the fourth one is the CO2 matrix. So what I need to do every day is I need to zero the KC analyzers with the nitrogen zero gap. Then I need to spend the analyzers with the TSC uh, standard, I say nitrogen matrix. Then I can analyze the sample one. Before I can analyze the sample two, I need to go to the zero span procedure again. So I need to zero it with the zero uh, helium zero gas. And span it with the uh, standard prepared helium matrix. Then I can analyze the sample two. Same thing. For sample three and sample four, I have to do the zero and span procedure again before I can analyze the sample three and sample four. As you can see, it's a very tedious work, especially you know, if you run your sample you know, automation process. You may have to suspend your automation process in order to uh, calculate the information. So what we support and what we believe uh, is going to be a improved procedure. It's that we, based on the correlation curve to generate for each matrix we build a, a, a conversion question up front. Then we just need to zero and span the process analysis one time. Then I can go ahead and analyze sample one, two, three, four. So in order to uh, conduct the experiment is uh, the schematic diagram of uh, our experiment set up. We use a, a valve of multi-purchase valve to select different streams on the same gas or zero gas or sample gas. Uh, the standard, uh, like a spank gas, we prepare in the high pressure system, okay, by very method. method. Uh, it's a high pressure, so we use a two-stage regulator to regulate down to 30 psi. It goes to a multi-purchase valve. Before you hit the uh, PSC analyzer, Use the compound flow control and for the flow and the pressure. Uh, the TSC analyzer we use a uh, base time motor, one of the 9,000 TSC analyzer. Although you can use any other TSC analyzer, that should work as well. But the, the analyzer itself has a 0 to 20 milliamp output. We put a 500 ohm resistor to bring it up to 0 to 10 volts output. And we use an ANT converter uh, produced by the uh, National Instruments to collect the analog signal and convert it to digital. And uh, uh, we, the data log is uh, uh, developed by the provider of information. Uh, we use that to process the data. Okay, this is a curve of the TSC response versus methane in nitrogen. 
Okay, as you can see, uh, it's pretty linear, and the slope is close to one, and you got uh, intercept close to zero. That's what we expect when you do the zero and span for a linear. Okay, without going through the zero and span again, without doing that. Okay, we we'll put the uh, standard that prepared in the uh, linear matrix, and we generate a three-point curve, regression curve. As you can see, the three-point regression curve is still a linear curve. It's great, but you see the uh, slope is very low, only 0.664. <coughs> Significant lower, like 75 percent lower, and you've got a negative. Next slide is scan. We can I go through the uh, your scan procedure again, and you can see it's still a linear curve, and the uh, TSC response works amazing. Preparing the nitrogen after preparing the argon application, um, the slope is a point eight two eight six two seven. It's lower than one, but it's higher than the linear matrix. Uh, you can see the uh, zero is a further deviate from zero. So based on these three curves, it's just difficult. We know it's a linear, instrument response linear, but if you today you analyze this calibrate with natural base engine, and you try to analyze the other matrix, it's hard to predict you know, what the actual analytical value will be. So that's why we propose a linear transformation, and we believe if we have true curve <laughs> parameters, and use, if we try some algebra to mass, then we should be able to transform from one operation to the other. Uh, this formula looks a little bit complicated, but it's very simple. Uh, many just tell us, okay, for example, why the concentration is high in a helium. And as long as we know the uh, slope M and the B intercept on both curves, we should be able to do the transformation okay, without going through the zero and span again. So in order to prove that, you know, uh, we want to prove it theoretically, it's doable. So we use the table. Table mainly is for data mapping. We map from one curve to the other. So the first common would be the hypothetical method constraint. Okay? And the common two to the last column would be the projected value based on the curve. So for example, uh, based on the previous curve generated, the nitrogen curve if I put uh, 7 ppm methane standard, I should get roughly 6.97 volts. Volts. Okay, that's all the base on the curve previous generation. Okay, the third column is a helium matrix. Okay, so if I put the methane the helium matrix based on the curve, for the 7 ppm methane sample, I should only get 4.53 volts, roughly. Now, with the linear transformation, this is the previous line to show the formula. If we do that transformation, apply that, now you can see the uh, 7 ppm methane can get 6.97 volts, exactly match this. So we just do the mass transformation. We cannot do anything else. This is the same thing uh, for the other matrix. The 7 ppm, we shall only get 5.75 k3 volt. That's based on the curve. Now, we would plug in use the linear transformation technique. Now, we got for 7 ppm, we got 6.9740. If you compare the second column, the fourth column, the last column, they exactly match. So regardless what constraint you put in, if you go to the linear transformation, that would, conversion would do the work for you. 
you don't need to go to the zero and spend. So how do we know it works? Theoretically, we know it works, right? Because we do the same thing. And then from one to the other, we know it works. But how about we put the real sample in? See uh, what kind of result we will get. So we prepared the standard like previous. We used previous to generate the curve. Now we put on, uh, on the same analyzer, analyzer again. Now again, this analyzer is calibrated to zero and span. Now the method standard to pay to magic. After we done that, we did nothing else. Okay, just put the same point in and just see what kind of response we will get from the TSC analyzer. So we put 4 ppm of helium, I'm sorry, 4 ppm of methane in helium. The analyzer tells us it's a 2.55 ppm. <coughs> now when we plug in the linear, uh, uh, sorry, the linear transformation conversion equation, the software tells us it's 3.97. <coughs> so it's very close to the theoretical value. Again, we put the 9.5 ppm methane in helium. The analyzer tells us it's a 6.204 uh, uh, ppm. The software tells us it's going to be 9.63 ppm after the linear information. <laughs> so this is pretty good, you know, within the 2% of the agreement. Okay, depending on the, uh, the accuracy requirement, you know, analysis, some is 2%, some 5%. You know, this can be done easy. Now you can take a look at another example. If we put 4 ppm, argon, the analyze tell us, you know, it's a really interesting point, it's a ppm. After the linear adjustment, linear transformation, then you got 4.07. Uh, 9 ppm, 9.5 ppm, analyze tell us it's 7.77. I've got 9.01. So it's a very close to you know the theoretical value. I believe if you would put more points on the curve, it should get you more accurate results because your data map is more accurate. So from this study, so we believe the universal calibration can be accomplished using the linear transformation technique and the calibration performed using the standard prepared in the nitrogen matrix can be used you know, for analyzing the sample in multiple conditions. So this is a valuable tool uh, when the analysis of the analytics are in a very symmetric <coughs> The size of the test samples is large. But as I show you the pre uh, you know, previous slide, we have been doing the you know, zero span for decades. You know, like, uh, we never change it. We never think that you know, other way of doing it. But we're dealing with a different matrix. Now, so we, we uh, propose this one, I think that it's going to help, uh, especially with the automation. But a lot of samples, we could run to get 40 samples overnight. But if the samples involve different matrices, then that will be different. Now, with plugging the linear regression, linear transformation technique, I think that you can easily solve this. Thing. Also, this uh, presentation mainly uh, discuss the uh, linear instrument, linear instrument like a TSC. Uh, we believe the same technique can be used for non-linear instruments, like or some other instruments. Uh, thank you for your attention. Your calibration curve, if you believe the math, it should work. 